Alzheimer's disease. Well, we know that the population is getting older and older because global medicine is uh, progressing. But the problem is that the, the people, the older they ask, the more they get Alzheimer's disease. With, pre with prevalence which go up to 40%, 40% approximately over 85, and that's just enormous. Well, on the other hand, it's good for some people, and some people are happy when they are older, but on the other hand, if every other person gets Alzheimer's disease, that's a huge burden, both for the patient, because living with dementia must be, I think, terrible, and we all hope all, all, all that we will never have it, but it's also a huge burden for the society for their family, but also for the society as a whole. That's why Alzheimer's disease was defined as a priority for RFD, both in fundamental research and in the pharmaceutical industry, a bit everywhere. The progression, well, when the general public think about Alzheimer's disease, they think about this one, they think about the clinical dementia, but actually the onset of the symptoms is much before. And clinically, you have two phases. One, where you already have symptoms and the family is noticing that a uh, uh, wife or uh, husband is losing the key or, or doesn't know where he parked the car. And that's called the hormonal phase and the patient experience my cognitive impairments, an impaired memory, especially the short-term memory. But much before, it's pre-symptomatic. But you will see that if we check the biomarkers, the brain is already abnormal. That's a very nice article published in the New England Journal of Medicine three years ago, where we see that the amyloids deposition, because there are, you know that there are two proteins which are accumulating in the brain in Alzheimer's disease, beta amyloid and tau, they increase progressively, and it begins more than 20 years before for the onset of the dementia. So it's much before that it occurs. And even the brain atrophy, the hypocampal volume, it's already very atrophic when you have the onset of the symptoms. And this one, it's a clinical score, a behavioral score. You see that it works progressively. So what's the target of the pharmaceutical industry? No, there have been a lot of trials uh, against amyloids, and most of them have failed. And because probably here it's too late, the, the, the brain is already too damaged. The idea is to treat the patient almost here, though. So at the very, very early stage. And I think the future clinical trials will be at this stage. And for that, you need early biomarker, and you need some kind of precision medicine because you know that there are all also genetic variants like the APOE4, which give a predisposition for Alzheimer's disease. So, in terms of biomarker, you have this, this nice uh, uh, um, schematics from Nature Review Neurology 2015. So, you have seen uh, we promise state of the art information in this course. You see that we <coughs> have state of the art because it was published just a few months ago in Nature Review Neurology. And you, you see that you have the uh, beta amyloid plaque and the toe accumulation, and that there are several biomarkers, which can be biological biomarkers, like measure of this protein in the cerebrospinal screen. Uh, PET scan, and we will talk a bit more about it, or measurement of nerve degeneration with either FDG PET or MRI, and we will speak about it a, a bit more in detail. Well, MRI, you know that there is atrophy, and we have made a demo of uh, uh, surfer magics, uh, we have uh, explained how brain segmentation works, and we are now producing surfer magics, so I won't go more into the detail because I already spent uh, one or two hours on, on this uh, topic. So let's go and talk a bit about PET scan in Alzheimer's disease. Amyloid PET scan is the new trendy one, I would say. Um, pharmaceutical industry has developed tri tracer, which specifically binds to, um, to the amyloid plaque. And the first one was the PIT, Pittsburgh Compound B. 
But the problem is that this half life was very, very short. So there are new tracers which are easier to use in clinical practice because they have a longer half life and it's claw beta P and claw beta B. And we see that here it's uh, amyloid negative. You have no abnormal amyloid deposition or a bit of amyloid disposition, but deposition, but which is still normal. Here, a patient with Alzheimer's dementia, you see a lot of amyloid deposition, that's why it's very quiet. And here, cognitively normal, but amyloid positive, and three years later, this patient developed Alzheimer's. So you see that it can be used as a predictor. Do you want to know that? Uh, I, will talk, I will talk about this issue in the next slide, so you read my mind. Yes. So, then, in, in this study, they took people who had a genetic uh, mutation which uh, uh, paralyzed uh, Alzheimer's disease, and they saw that in non-carrier, the, the, there are no abnormal deposition, and in carrier, progressively, more and more amyloids. So, I come to your questions. Should we scan everybody? And the answer is no for several reasons. Well, you answer, would you like to know that? The high psychological impacts that to tell a patient that he will get Alzheimer's disease in 10 or 20 years, and that in addition, we have not worked for him. So what's the clinical interest? But also practical number, limit number of PET scan, busy with cancer patients, high cost, limited availability of the depressor. So I think it's not a, a scanning modality for everybody. But yes, in, in a specific a clinical case, and there were, was a, public, a paper published in Alzheimer's and dementia two years ago by a, a consensus group where they, they define appropriate use case. In some patients, it can be useful. And I think also in the framework of clinical trial, there the question is different and it might be useful. But not only amyloid imaging, because glucose metabolism, so the simple FDG PET scan is also very useful and one of the main markers of the evolution of Alzheimer's disease. And you see here a deficit in glu of glucose metabolism, you see here a global uh, increase uh, of uh, amyloid uh, deposition, and also more exotic tracer like uh, carbon-11 nicotine, for example, which, which show deficit in cholinergic activity, and carbon-11 PNP, uh, which show high acetyl cholinesterase activity. So we are here uh, at what we call molecular imaging. And with PET scan, I think that's, that's what guarantees the survival of PET scan against uh, MRI, is that they can develop a specific molecular imaging radioligand much easier than with MRI. There were new uh, uh, international working group criteria uh, version which were published in Lancet Neurology uh, last year, which defined that the marker of diagnosis for Alzheimer's disease were amyloid PETs, so the plaque that you detect with PET scan, and measurement of amyloid and TO in the CSF, which is uh, a biological measurement uh, which requires a lom lom lombar uh, puncture, a CSF, uh, something, but for example, we were discussing with uh, Dr. Norbert who wrote the article in Nature, and she, she told us that at Karolinska in Sweden, they are doing it to all suspected Alzheimer's patients. It's not a very nice examination, but it's very useful. And they define the marker of AD progression as neurodegeneration, as measured by FDG PET and structural. Uh, MRI and measurement of brain atrophy. So I think these are the ones probably for clinical trial. And in Cambridge, they were asking to the pharmaceutical industry, why don't you use more FDG PET? It's simple, it's available, and it's one of the main markers of disease progression. There was a very recent article published in Brand by the group of Murray at Mayo Clinic who said, but it's not amyloid the main problem. The main problem is two. And they, they uh, scanned and analyzed post-mortem specimen of more than uh, 3,000 patients and realized that it's two protein which drive the cognitive decline and memory loss. Although amyloid 
they suck as dementia progress, but it's not the primary culprit. So very, very recent discovery which was uh, relayed by the media all over the world. And then, can you image so? The answer is not yet. There are some, some trials uh, to, to do it, some markers, some group are developing uh, specific radioligands that bind to the toprotein, but it's not so easy because of particularity of the aggregation of the toprotein in the brain and also the complexity of the radio tracer design itself. So here are the references, and as I said, they are very recent about azeotracism. 